All right, man. So normally you'd have the wiring harness coming through right here at the firewall. <coughs> and as it's running along, pretty much all you gotta do is just grab it. It just comes out as one big harness. And you'll have one of these that, that are on the firewall you have to undo. <coughs> and pretty much after you get it pulled, make like a little angle with the harness itself. And once you make that little angle, just pretty much like kind of bend it back and try to get this whole entire harness out over here on the passenger side. Alright, so after you get it out on the passenger side, you just distribute, you know, everything that needs to be distributed. Because I'm trying to do it the easier way. Everyone will usually take the fuse box and move it inside. I'm not trying to do all that. Um, like I said, I'm trying to do it the easy way. You know, so I don't really have to do as much, but it's still going to clean up the bait a lot. Like, here's the harness. I already stripped it down. I've started soldering wires and etc. Um, <coughs> but pretty much, like, you'll need to mark all these and everything. Um, just like this. This is for the rear injectors. Uh... This is for the knock sensor, which I've actually kind of remembered where all of these go. I just pulled engines on them so many times. See, you got, and this goes to like the driver side of the intake plenum for the idle air servo, which if you're twin turbo, you won't have that. So there's one thing out of your way already. Um, but like your coolant temperature stuff and all that, it'll come up. And see, I'm running it down here um, under the fuse box so it's out of the way, but it's still clean. Alright, so like you got your coil pack stuff, your PTU, you got, like I said, the coolant temperature sensor stuff, and you gotta think, your coolant temperature sensor stuff is only about like right here. Mm, about right here. And. I'm just pretty much going off memory because I don't have a good engine to you know at least set down in here and see exactly where everything goes but I if I extend it too much then I can just kind of bundle it up and tape it back into the harness so yeah I mean it's pretty much just like pulling your harness through the firewall and then getting that little bend which I got some conduit here that I can show you exactly how. <clears throat> Pretty much you got the whole wire harness. Say this is the whole wire harness, right? And you got the whole wire harness that's coming through the firewall. What you want to do is kind of like bend it back like that and pull it through. So you get the outcome of this. You don't have to pull it all the way back inside, but you will have to move some of the interior stuff such as a glove box and everything like that. So you pull the glove box out. Then this is pretty much what you're gonna have um, to work with. Which you can see right there where all them bare wires are. That's about where your harness is gonna be already. I mean, if you want to, you can pull it um, sorry I just woke up, but if you want to, you can pull it in to the interior and, you know, try to get it shoved back through, but I just found the easiest way because this is going to be my second wire tuck on a 3000. The first one, that's what I did, and it was just a pain in the ass to get it back through. Um, so yeah, and I don't know if you know how to solder or not, but... Pretty much, that's what your soldering joint should look like. I mean, that one is actually kind of shitty, but for the most part, that's what they should look like. Um, and everyone's like, oh, you should use different color wires, dude. I've, I've done it before. It, it really doesn't matter all that much. Just do one wire at a time. Cut the same length of wire at a time. 
like pretty much just get it all prepared and ready for what's going to happen. And um, I even moved the starter solenoid wire, um, which is going to be coming up through here. And this plug, which is usually on the inside of the engine bay, about right here. Uh, you'll just pretty much pull that up and move it in and under there. Like I said, I'm not going like all out on this wire tuck. If I was, then the fuse box would already been moved. I'm just trying to show people that there's a simpler, uh, simpler alternative of doing this. And like, usually you'll have your AC stuff right up here, right? Well, I ended up, you can see the harness right here. Just simply moving it right down here. Keeps it clean and out of the way. Which I do advise highly to make sure there's some type of um, weather resistant seal that And that's done in between this cover and the box itself. And then you can see right here where I had to cut this bracket, which I will end up taking it off and remaking a bracket. But I had to cut it because it was hitting. But, I mean, where this bolt's already at, there should already be a threaded hole. So you have nothing to worry about with that. Um, like I said, just run your harness through. I mean, this is if you want to do it this way. Most people will just, like, Deleted or such. I'm not going to go through all that hassle. Then you're going to have like all this stuff, and which, I mean, I believe that's actually to the AC also. And then you'll have these, which run to your fan. These, which will run up to the alternator, and pretty much that's it. And I'm actually going to be doing the relocation kit on the battery. So this is going to be in the back. Um, my ground will be in the back. But you still have this main ground right here. Which I actually had to drill a hole for this and nut and bolt. But it's a good ground. It's on the body. Which it's usually, uh, let me see, right here. That's where the ground is usually at, along with the ground for the or the negative for the battery. Um, like I said, you'll just move it over here, and really, actually, wherever you can mount it right here, and you got this, um, which pretty much is just from the fender. You can clean it off. Uh, you can use really anything, sandpaper doesn't matter as long as you get a, a good ground and a good connection or else the harness won't be sending or won't be grounding out when it's supposed to um, on the signals but I mean yeah dude overall it's it's not a bad deal so pretty much just give you a rundown pull the harness through the firewall bend it around pull the whole entire thing don't leave those wires over there because those won't be out there. You're going to pull the whole entire harness, which will be like every connector and everything from the engine bay. You're going to pull it through, and then pretty much you're going to have to undo the entire harness, like of the whole entire conduit and tape to where it's just bare wires like this. Um, and pretty much figure out what needs to go where, which... You'll have a good engine in your VR4, so you won't have to worry about that. Um, like what I'm having to do, pretty much guesstimate. But most people, they'll go to the junkyard and find the same colored wires and go through all the trouble. Like I said, dude, you really don't have to. And also, whenever I was doing the soldering, I was told to get some liquid tape. I mean, I've I've used it before, just not on really too much solder, especially on a project like this, which I will end up actually dissecting these wires again after I'd already soldered them and put the liquid tape on them, just because I don't really like it 
heat shrink is the easiest, most efficient way. And after you get your harness done, and you have all the heat shrink on every single soldering joint, which if you don't know how to solder, dude, just you can YouTube it, whatever, or I can make a video on how to solder also. Um, pretty much I'm just doing all I can to help. Uh, that's really all I've ever done for everyone. I, I love to help people. But, I mean, this one is actually for the mass airflow. I'm going to run the mass airflow up and through the front of the engine bay. And it's going to run up and around. Because <coughs> you got to think the mass airflow will be placed right around here. So pretty much going to run up and around and under the mass airflow. So I mean like I said it, I'm not going like too crazy on this wire tuck. Um, I'm just doing the basics you know getting it clean. Uh, I'm going to be leaving the big fuse box but that's really nothing that too many people's going to be all pissy about and say oh your engine bay doesn't look clean because my engine bay has actually come along pretty nicely. I mean, after I finish this harness, which is coming up to the top and the driver's side of the engine because of the cam crank sensor and the idle air servo, um, after I finish this, I'm going to pull it back through. I'm going to pull this little harness back through. And, like, everything off the firewall is coming off. I'm getting all steel braided lines, and I'm filling every hole that I'm not going to be using and uh, pretty much just going from that and after I like fill all them holes and everything of course I'm going to paint it it's going to end up being metallic purple and the car is going to end up being um, it's a color that only came on 92 and 93's uh, Albany Black Mika color code X02 uh, it's kind of like a deep and dark uh, purple but like I said I'm just my main goal is getting this harness done before I leave for college in Ohio uh, the 18th so I don't have much time but hopefully this video helped you out and gave you a little bit more understanding of what you needed to do um, if you need any more help you can just get up with me on Facebook and such um, and that's, that's about it. Um, and filling the unnecessary holes, that's if you want to. Most people don't really care for it. But I'm actually going to be doing it the right way. And welding up all the holes. Uh, pretty much just going from there. I'm actually going to drop a subframe. And completely repaint it. Etc, etc. You know, I'm just... I'm wanting to have the title of the cleanest in a 3000 GT. That's my goal. I doubt I'm going to get that anytime soon, but that's a goal I can shoot for. But yeah, man, like I said, if you need any more help on any of this, just you can get up with me on Facebook or whatever. Just let me know.